The operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has finally submitted its original accident manuals to Japan's Nuclear Safety Agency, but it maintains that only half of the document's contents should be made public. In mid-September, TEPCO submitted its manuals for nuclear accidents to a lower house committee investigating the Fukushima accident. But the utility blacked out most of the contents. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency later instructed the operator to submit the originals for three types of manuals for accidents of varying scale. The agency also asked the utility how much of the contents could be made public. TEPCO now says that about 50% of the material should remain secret. It also says it wants to disclose just 10% of a manual for dealing with serious accidents. TEPCO says this is because the manuals contain information covered by intellectual property rights. It also says the documents cannot be made public because such facilities could become targets of terrorist attacks. The Nuclear Safety Agency says it will consider the validity of TEPCO's argument. It will aim to disclose the manuals by the end of October. The people who will be cleaning up the radiation that's leaked from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant started a training program. They're learning how to decontaminate cities and towns safely. On Tuesday, 113 construction workers, as well as people looking for jobs, attended the first two-day seminar held in Kodayama City. An official from the Japan Atomic Energy Agency briefed them on the kind of tools that are most effective for removing radioactive materials from the gutters of houses and ditches alongside roads. The participants were also shown how to protect themselves while they're working. On the second day, they'll receive practical training in using dosimeters. My hometown is a radioactive hotspot with high radiation levels in different parts. I hope to get a job as a decontamination worker. Once the workers have been trained, they'll be ready to start the actual work on decontamination. The prefecture is planning to hold 10 seminars between now and the end of the year. It's aiming to train as many people as possible to help speed up the cleanup process. Japan's nuclear watchdog has ordered Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, to draw up clear safety guidelines to get the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant under control. TEPCO is striving to bring the disabled reactors to a cold shutdown by next January and then to begin preparations for their decommissioning. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says it wants the utility to set specific post-emergency safety protocols that will guide its work over the next three years. The watchdog says the objective will be to prevent any additional discharge of radioactive substances and to drastically reduce radiation levels at the plant. It says TEPCO should identify ways to pinpoint and control radiation hotspots and take steps to prevent hydrogen explosions. The agency also gave the utility a mid-October deadline to explain the safety measures when using decontaminated water to cool down the reactors. The government watchdog says it will ask experts to review the guidelines that TEPCO presents. A reactor with the Genkai nuclear power plant in western Japan shut down automatically on Tuesday following the technical problem in its cooling system. The plant's operator, Kyushu Electric Power Company, says no one was hurt and there have been no increases in radiation levels near the plant. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the number four reactor at the plant stopped operating at around 1.40 p.m. on Tuesday. Signaling equipment indicated abnormalities in the cooling system's steam condensers. The suspension has left the utility with only one of its six reactors in operation. The Japanese have seen in their infinite wisdom uh, that uh, they're going to burn 500,000 metric tons of radioactive rubble and rubble from the Fukushima area and from the earthquakes. They're going to bring this stuff to Tokyo and they're going to incinerate it <coughs> and let it out high smokestacks. Well, what that does is it volatilizes a lot of the uh, radiation that's in the rubble <coughs> that has fallen down onto the rubble. 
you can't burn radiation away. You can just put it places. And so what this will do is a lot of this radiation will go up in the air as gas and it will get on the jet stream and it will come over to America and even while the Fukushima Daiichi triple meltdown, triple melt throughs, triple melt outs continue uncontrolled we're going to get a double dose of it with all this debris being incinerated and sent our way. Now the readings that we're going to get here will certainly be over background but they don't compare to some of the readings across the United States in the last 10 days our colleague in uh, St. Charles, Missouri, north of St. Louis Porter Blog, he has detected 178 times background in the rain there. We've had a detections of over 100 times background in the Toronto area and in Winnipeg. We've had incredibly high detections in the Pacific Northwest with fears that plutonium-239 could have been in some of that fallout that those people, unbeknownst to them, were subjected to.